Hello guys, how's it going? My name is Dalrin, and 905 is dropping very, very soon. It's an exciting patch with a lot of changes from legendaries to the systems to classes, but also covenants. One of the things that Blizzard did a lot of work in 905 is adjusting covenant class abilities as well as covenant specific abilities in order to supplement those that are not really often picked in order to hopefully get players to play the covenant class combos they really enjoy. I know that everybody always chases the meta, trying to play something that sims the best or performs the best in raids, dungeons, or PvP, but I've always wanted with the Covenant choices personally, not because they're simming the highest, but rather what is the most fun combo for me. Some of those combos are meta, some of them, or most of them are not. And I just kind of want to share with you guys a list of what Covenant changes I am planning on doing or either thinking or definitely gonna do for 905 patch. I'm hoping this patch will offer you a lot of you guys opportunity to play the covenants you really like because there's quite a lot of changes that Blizzard has done and there's quite a lot of tuning and adjustments that have happened. So hopefully with this video, some of you might be inspired to really chase your dreams. Hopefully this video won't be too long. I'll try to shorten it as best as I can, just warning ahead of time, because I gotta cover every class that I'm interested in playing in 905 and I got a lot more odds that I'm trying to level up little by little. First class we'll start off has been a pride and joy for me is the Death Knight. I primarily play my Death Knight as Frost and I felt like the Necrolord Covenant would synergize really well with it. And boy did it. It actually works super well, the damage in AoE is great, single target burst is fantastic and I feel like it really synergizes well into the two hand play style which is how I choose to play my Death Knight. The more I'm playing my Death Knight though, the more I miss mobility. And I remember back in the Alpha and the Beta, the Night Face Soul Shape ability gave Death Knights quite a bit of movement and I kind of sort of miss it. However, there's also some adjustments happening to the Night Fae. You're going to be able to stack up the buff size debuff of the Night Fae Death's Dew ability quite quickly. It also opens up opportunity for Death Knight's Obliterates to crit, as majority of my damage for my Death Knight has been Obliterate inside of Mythic Pluses. But Obliterate doesn't have any AoE component. It's a strong single target ability, similar to a Chaos Ball for Warlock minus that Havoc combo. And Death's Dew basically gives you that Havoc slash Sweep and Strikes that you're kind of missing in Mythic Pluses. So I'm actually strongly considering going Night Fate for the massive cleave of the big two-hander playstyle plus the crazy mobility that Night Fate offers. And I feel like some of the soul binds would synergize with the Death Knight, especially the one that gives you crit every time you're hitting your target and, you know, your ability is working pretty well off of crits. I think that would be a strong potential combo. Still a bit on the fence, but definitely considering going Night Fate. Then we have my Druid, which I primarily play as Feral. I'm a huge fan of the Kitty Cat playstyle with bleeds and dots. However, a lot of the damage ends up being right now quite a lot of bites. The bite is quite a good portion of the Feral gameplay. And for a bit, I was actually thinking maybe with this patch, go Venti or Feral. I never see Venti or Feral anywhere and adding an extra big button cooldown to your Berserk, which is already a big button, could be quite interesting, a more hands-on approach on playing Feral compared to Convoke that kind of plays the game for you for a short moment. Don't get me wrong, Feral's a night phase a lot of fun, and pressing Convoke and having to just play the game for you for a short moment is an enjoyable experience because the burst is quite fantastic, the number's always fun, but I feel like after a bit I would kind of get bored of the ability and I would want something where I'm more hands-on with the Feral, so potentially switching a Covenant in the future is on the table for me. But Venthyr, I feel like didn't get enough changes for me to want to try it. I'm probably going to do more research to see if it still might be a covenant I might pick in the end anyway. But definitely thinking about which covenant I might want to try with the Druid. Since Necrolord is getting quite a bit of a buff, Carrying is not looking all that bad either. And if Venthyr actually might be somewhat solid, I could make my Druid a different covenant, anything that isn't a Night Fae, and still quite enjoy my experience. But I'm not quite sure exactly where I want to go with it, but I know that I want to make a switch at some point. Then there is the Hunter, and just like the Druid, I really, really want to go Venthyr, as the Hunter changes have actually been quite substantial for Venthyr. Flate Shot ability gives you, first of all, longer uptime, so that dot heavy playstyle that Survivor plays into, that's an extra dot for you to throw into your gameplay pretty regularly. It costs no focus, and it weaves in quite well. Then you also get random bouts of kill shots that also will do extra damage. Normally, kill shot is an ability you get to press during your execute, but having that ability more present throughout your full rotation, I think could be a lot of fun. There's also a lot of synergy with the Venthyr Covenant, of providing quite a lot of haste, as well as the Survival Hunter, which lacks all the haste in the world. Haste smooths out your rotation quite a bit, and I'm kind of a huge fan of that idea. Right now, it's really difficult for me just to take that one step into going full-blown Venthyr tomorrow, switching my Covenant, and then trying to grind out all the Renown, because I want to see some of the early sims. 
if the Venthyr damage is somewhat close to the Night Fae, where I feel like I won't be losing too much on AoE in particular, which I feel like is where survival really shines, and being AoE as a Night Fae is quite a huge amount of damage altogether, then I might just take the plunge. But definitely considering Venthyr as a hunter, and I feel like I don't have too many characters that are Venthyr right now, so that'll be definitely one of the classes that I feel like fits the Covenant playstyle altogether. The Mage is a class I've been sleeping on for a bit, mostly because I've been leveling my Warlock, while also trying to maintain all my alts, trying to get them all their weeklies done. Between Torghast, Mythic Pluses, as well as the Mythic Denathrius progression, I haven't really had that much time to level more characters, and the Mage is definitely on the table for me at some point or another. I'm still thinking of the Kyrian Arcane combo, mostly because Arcane is all about Arcane damage, Kyrian has all the Arcane damage, I thought it would be maybe kind of interesting. Plus, seeing yet another mage go Night Fae, as there's a billion already mages that are Night Fae, I think it would just be too boring for me at the moment. So the plan is to level the mage, and for now, stay in Kyrian. Maybe at some point I'll decide if I want to switch my Covenant, but at first I gotta get this guy to max level to see how this ability plays when it comes to actually doing M+, Torghast, and Raids. Monk is a class that's actually getting quite a few nerfs in 905, and these nerfs are coming out very, very quickly at you. Out of nowhere, monks are actually talking about rerolling to rogues. Now, not saying that every monk is talking about it, but some of my friends that re-rolled monks for like the flavor of the month thing are literally telling me, hey, do you want to do some Torghast? Do you want to do some dungeons? I'm thinking of getting my rogue up and running because of these changes. So we're not quite sure exactly how big monks are going to get nerfed. But one of the other things I also heard is potentially the Kyrian playstyle might not be the only playstyle viable with some of these changes. You might actually be able to play other covenants that could be more meta. From the get-go, I found the Night Fae ability, which I felt like weaves into your playstyle of the hit combo, where you use abilities that are not to be repeated, and I feel like with how often this ability resets, I felt like it would be an extra button for me to weave into my rotation regularly, instead of having a big cooldown to play with, since monks already have a couple of those. For now, the plan is to find some time to level my monk at some point, but I'm very interested to see how these fixes for the bugs that are supposed to nerf them are going to work out. And I'm very interested to see which covenants end up maybe rising after all these changes. For Paladin, I've kind of enjoyed the gameplay of the Night Fae Paladin from the get-go. Being able to buff up my allies and provide them blessings so they can perform better, survive attacks, get the cooldowns back quicker, do more damage, I've always been a huge fan of that kind of group gameplay. Now, for the Night Fae, it might not be all that great for pure single target for yourselves. You know, sometimes, let's say you're doing World Quest, it might not be the most optimal choice for an ability. It doesn't deal the crazy damage that the other ones do and doesn't have nearly powerful cooldown management for it. But I really like the Night Fae Blessings. I've been a huge fan because I feel like it's viable as a prot, holy, and red. And even though reds right now aren't looking like the strongest class for meta stuff, if you can buff a class that's already pumping really hard, then aren't you providing some sort of a group value as a paladin anyway? Like for example, if a mage does more holy damage from one of your blessings of summer, does not make ret a little bit stronger because you're making mages stronger? At least that's kind of how my thought process was originally when picking this covenant. But I'm a huge fan of it. I feel like red is one of those classes, like a death knight, with not a lot of mobility. So the soul shape ability always comes into play and is super enjoyable to play into. And I feel like the Night Fae Covenant is something I still want to explore as I definitely have a high interest in it. For Priests, on the other hand, I don't really want to play Night Fae. A lot of players have been swapping to the Night Fae Priest with the Fairies, and I understand their group gameplay, but I just feel like... I feel priests already bring enough utility for groups as is. As a priest, you come in as a Disc Priest, Shadow Priest, Holy Priest with the ability to dispel allies of diseases, gripping allies out of a bad situation, mass dispelling a whole group and even controlling enemies with fears. As a Shadow Priest, silence, stuns for Holy and Shadow, I guess. And I feel like you already have so much group utility as is, I feel like adding more group utility doesn't really give you that gameplay itch that I would want to see. In fact, I actually would rather play some kind of a build that augments Priest in other forms. And I'm actually legitimately considering Kyrian Priest. Now, I know there's not a lot of Kyrian Priests out there. In fact, it's not really a popular combo by many. I feel like there's a lot of Priests that are playing Venthyr, maybe even Necrolord, quite a bit of Night Fae, but nobody is really playing Kyrian. And the idea of a Shadow Priest having this like holy metamorphosis type of form where he could just rampage on bosses and adds alike every three minutes with such short cooldowns that Shadow Priests normally have, having a massive long CD to use once in a while to just blast through my foes actually kind of sounds exciting. So legit considering maybe trying out the Kyrian Priest in the future. 
And for my rogue, what can I say? I started Ventir, we stay in Ventir. Ventir and the Bone Spike from the Necklord are getting quite a bit of a buff. So for if you guys are playing rogues, I definitely feel like you should check it out, at least on PTR. At least try rerolling your rogue on PTR to test those abilities out, because the improvements that Blizzard is doing for them is going to be quite great. I've been a huge fan of Ventir from the get-go, mostly for the aesthetics, and now that the ability is actually going to be kind of worth anything, I wonder how many more rogues are going to re-roll to this covenant in order to truly give it a go. Very interested how this will turn out in the future, but so far, very, very happy to be playing Venthyr going into my rogue into 905. Kyrian Shaman is a choice that I made kind of off the bat. I just kind of knew that I wanted to play the Kyrian Shaman ever since I started playing the beta and the alpha. I know that there's a very strong coordination between Enhancement and Venthyr. I know that Elemental can be really good with the Necrolord, but I wanted a Covenant that can kind of fit no matter which playstyle I play. I'm a huge fan of the Enhancement Shaman, and I do want to explore Elemental, and I wanted to explore Restoration as well. So I wanted a Covenant that would just kind of be kind of a middle ground, pretty decent for anything I wanted to try. But the more I play Enhancement as a Carrion, the more I like it. I feel like it has a pretty simple ability, and I would say most Shaman abilities for the Covenants are all pretty simple. They are not exactly like rogue abilities that are super low impact, as they definitely can make an impact in the playstyles. They can offer quite a lot of AoE damage or quite a bit of cleave or pretty good single target. They can also apply healing, like off healing to allies as well. And I feel like the current ability did a pretty good job of just about everything. It also allows me just to enjoy enhancement as is. Dropping a random totem, which I feel like is, you know, very shaman-esque uh, from time to time. But I'm mostly just getting to use and play that raw enhancement gameplay. That fun rotation without always having to kind of try to cheese the damage around your big chain harvest. I just drop a totem down if I see enemies and I'm just playing enhancement as is. So I'm a huge fan for the Kyrian because of its flexibility and the ability for me to just play the raw gameplay of Enhancement, enjoying it for what it is, not really having to kind of incorporate my ability and find ways to min-max it or anything like that. I'm basically just pressing my Enhancement buttons and dropping a totem from time to time, and that makes me happy as is. For my Warlock, I've actually gained quite a lot of gear from the little amount of time I've spent at level 60, and the Necrolord version of Demonology Warlock has been very enjoyable. I've even been able to play around with Destro a little bit, playing out that fire build that I've always wanted to try back in the beta. The fun thing about Warlocks is you actually have a lot of legendaries compared to some of the other classes that give you so many different playstyles that are all valid and pretty decent. The Necrolord Covenant actually is quite compatible with at least 2 out of 3 specs and even can be okay for Affliction as well, so definitely no qualms there at all. With the changes happening to the Necrolord Covenant in 905, making the flashcraft ability even tankier, that's I feel like something that the Warlock gameplay needs, to feel like you could just stand there and take the damage, as I've always imagined a Warlock is like a tankier mage, where a mage will try to bob and weave out of enemy abilities and use that mobility, the Warlock takes the damage kind of head on and it dishes it out in twice the amount. It's a very turret-like gameplay, but I feel like for Warlock it fits pretty well, and I've been enjoying it quite a lot, I think mostly because of the synergy within Demon Bolt, because that gives you mobility, and also how that synergizes together with the Decimating Bolt, which is the Covenant ability, so it ends up working out pretty well altogether. Just recently got this guy to a max level, just recently got him with a bit of gear, just recently got him, you know, rolling in the Renown for a little bit, almost trying to finish out my Necrolord Renown to get all the Soul Binds and all the upgrades, so for now, not really thinking of switching anything from a Warlock at the moment. And you know with the Warrior, I had to go with the Banner. Bye bye, the Venthyr with Condemn, it's a great ability and super fun, but I just feel like pressing one button over and over and over again, I'm getting that Feral Druid Night Face Syndrome, where I just kind of want to be more involved with my gameplay. The banner itself is going through quite a lot of changes in 905. It's going to be more of a group utility, which, as you can tell, I'm kind of a huge fan of abilities that add extra group utility to a class that brings maybe a little, so now it can bring more. But also the way that the ability works with the mastery buff that it provides, I feel like it's actually pretty good for Fury, which is a spec that I've been spending a lot of time on. Being able to provide a group buff I think would also be fantastic. I feel like the soul binds for the Necrolord Covenant fit it pretty well for the Warrior. They fit my Death Knight pretty well, so imagine being able to take that gameplay of buffing up your allies with this banner, gaining all this crazy amount of extra primary stat for you and your allies. I think it'll be really, really good going forward. It just sounds like a more interesting covenant for me to play right now, and the Venthyr is definitely a tried and true, it does a lot of damage, but I kinda just over time playing Venthyr, got kind of bored of playing and pressing one button for a good 
what 60% of my gameplay. It's a really good button and it's super fun, but I feel like I've already been through the honeymoon phase with that covenant and I'm ready to explore different and interesting changes. And good thing that the Necrolord Warrior is getting quite a few updates to make the ability a lot better, potentially with the Fleshcraft that could be a really solid tank going forward. And that's going to be my video on what I'm going to be doing with Covenants with every one of the classes that I'm playing or planning on playing in the future. One of the things that I've actually been doing is trying to keep up a spreadsheet in order to see which Covenants I'm playing right now to see if I'm maybe leaning one way or another. I've noticed that I have way too many characters that are Night Fae and I really want to start breaking out of that shell. I want to see a lot of different playstyles and try to make some of the lesser popular playstyles work, especially if they're if I just find them more interesting to my personal gameplay. In the end, I'm hoping to have maybe as even of amount of every class and different covenants by the end of it. But of course, we will see what other updates in the future Blizzard has. There's potentially going to be a lot more switches going forward, except maybe with my rogue. I'm always on the lookout for other playstyles for different classes and finding playstyles that I truly enjoy. Whether they are top tier meta or whether they're just super enjoyable for me, I'd rather play a covenant playstyle option that I personally enjoy. I try not to make it a numbers game too much and numbers do impact my playstyle and selection a little bit, but as long as they're within a margin of error that's acceptable to me, I would usually rather take a playstyle that's more enjoyable, that's more fun, where the abilities of that covenant class combo are just more interesting to me to play with rather than something that does the most amount of damage but has maybe like the dullest gameplay that I might not enjoy. Let me know your thoughts if you guys are going to be doing any Covenant switches with this 905 patch. And if you're going to be doing any, I think Monday slash Tuesday if you are EU might be the time to do it. Just make that switch, start getting renowned. But if you're not sure if you want to play Covenant, wait until the Sims come out, wait until the patch comes out, wait until we have more information so you can make a more informed decision going forward. But thank you guys so much for checking this video. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, I'll see all of you guys in another video.